In this lecture we're going to start to explore the idea of multicollinearity and I'm going to do it in a totally different way than anyone else on the planet will probably approach this. I'm going to do it by looking at the formula for standard error and I'm going to do it while analyzing some data with you. And if you want to follow along, which I encourage you to do, uh, you can download R, the stats program we're going to be using at www.rproject.org. I walk you through how to download this program in my video uh, called Zero Economics Preliminaries on Berkey Academy. I also encourage you, if you haven't done this so far, watch my video called Six Inference B, where I go through this standard error formula. And so, if you've got R installed, go ahead and open it up. And real quickly, this standard error formula is if you have two explanatory variables. The top here is the sum of squared residuals, and this is the standard error for variable 1. Let's call it education. The standard error for the education variable involves the sum of the squared residuals from the regression. The top part of a variance formula, except for you're not dividing by n minus 1 for education, also the correlation, 1 minus the correlation between t the two explanatory variables, perhaps education and experience, and then here degrees of freedom, n minus 2 minus 1 with two explanatory variables. Now if we have a general regression with more than two explanatory variables or any number, then the formula has just a couple of changes. It's still got the sum of squared residuals, the variance of the variable that we're looking at, basically the variance anyway, 1 minus, and instead of the correlation between the two variables, this is the R squared from a regression, where we run a regression of education, this variable we're looking at, on all of the other explanatory variables that we might have. So suppose we have education and um, we have experience, we have race, we have region of the country, we have union membership, all these sorts of variables. This is the R squared of the regression, ed education explained by these other things. And that's going to be the key thing when we're talking about multicollinearity. And also here, n minus k minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now why do we care about this standard error so much? Well, one of the things that you want to do most often when you're running a regression is see if a variable is statistically significant. And in order to do that, the main thing you, you do is you calculate a t-statistic and you divide the value of the estimate on top by the standard error of that estimate on the bottom. And so that's this formula. That's why it's so critical. And so I'm going to load up R and we're going to actually run a regression. We're going to look at the standard error and then we're going to calculate it sort of by hand so you can see how all these factors come into play. And so let me bring R over here and open up your R and you want to load the library. This is a library that comes standard with R mass and then you want to attach a data set that is inside that library called cars 93. Now after we have attached this data set we want to run a regression. So let's run a sim simple kind of regression here. But first let's look at the data set so we can see what kind of variables we have to work with here. So do a summary of cars 93. And so we have such variables as the price and type of airbags, drivetrain, cylinders, miles per gallon in the city and the highway, engine size, horsepower, etc. And so I'm going to explain the price as my dependent variable and I'm going to choose a few of these other variables as explanatory variables here. And so let me type a regression here and then I'll let you know what I choose. Okay, I selected some variables from the ones I have available up there, making very careful to type the names exactly as they are listed in the, the summary up here. So MPG period highway, 
with MPG Capital Highway small letters here is exactly as it is listed right here. And so I selected a few variables. I am not saying that this regression makes sense. That's not the point of this regression. The point is to talk about multicollinearity. And so after we run this regression, we'll do a summary of that regression, car reg. And we see here that we have um, an R squared of about 0.686. So 68 or 69 percent of the variation in price can be explained with these variables. And some of our variables are statistically significant and some are not. So engine size is not, miles per gallon city and miles per gallon highway are not. And so when a variable is not statistically significant, again, it could be for two reasons. It could be because the estimate is small and close to zero, or it could be because the standard error is large. And so let's calculate the standard error for this first variable mpg dot highway now the standard error we see here is 0 0.35508 and so make a note of that standard error and now let's see where does that standard error actually come from now we're going to get R to help us with some of these calculations but let's look back at the ingredients we need we need the sum of the squared residuals we need the variance of the uh, variable miles per gallon highway. We need the R squared from a regression where we try to explain miles per gallon highway with all of the other variables. And we need N minus K minus 1 which is the degrees of freedom. And so let's just find each of these things that we need in turn. And so first the sum of squared residuals uh, you can actually get very easily in R by typing deviance. So the deviance of that regression car reg gives us what we want, which is 2693.158. That is the sum of squared residuals. Now we're going to need the square root of that to put into our standard error formula here. Now we also need the variance of mpg.highway. And that variance is 28.4273. But notice, we don't really want the variance. What we want here is uh, the variance before it is divided by n minus 1. And then we take the square root of that amount. And so we need to know what's in for this regression. Well, by looking at this, uh, I can tell that there are 93 cars in this data set. And so N is 93. We also need to know K, the number of explanatory variables. And we can count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So K is equal to 6. And now we need to run this other regression. So let me do that real quickly here. We need to run the regression of... I'll call this uh, car regression number two. And that regression that we want to do is taking miles per gallon highway as the dependent variable. And then I have all the other explanatory variables over there. And let's get that R squared by doing a summary of that regression, car reg two. And we see that that R squared is 0 0.905. Okay, interesting. Now, we have all the information we need to get going here. And so let's go to Excel with those numbers and calculate this standard error. All right, I took the numbers that we looked at a minute ago. Let me walk you through these real quickly. This, here's the sum of squared residuals. But in the formula, we need the square root of those. So that's 51.8956. On the bottom, we found out that the variance of highway miles per gallon is 28.4273. But this is not the variance. This is the variance before it's divided by n minus 1. So we need to multiply it by n minus 1, 92 in this case, to get 2615. And then you see that it's under the square root also. So that's 51. Then we need that r squared, which is 0 0.905. In the formula, it's 1 minus r squared, which is 0 0.095. And then the square root, which is 0 0.308. And then we need the square root of n minus k minus 1 
86 degrees of freedom. The square root of that is 9.27. So now let's calculate the standard error by hand to see if we get the same thing that we got from R. And so let's see. When we enter everything into that uh, formula here, we get 0 0.35502 instead of 0 0.35508, which is pretty close. Now, the whole point of going through this exercise is to see why is the standard error what it is. But we're focusing on multicollinearity, so let's just focus on this 1 minus r squared part. If that r squared was 0, then this part would just become the square root of 1, which is to say if the highway miles per gallon was uncorrelated with the other variables, the standard error would be smaller. But the highway miles per gallon is highly correlated with the other variables with a uh, r squared of 0.905, and that's going to increase the standard error quite a bit. Now we'll come back and look at some details in a second.